So I found if I was not eating in the morning, I would make up for it by eating more in the evening. Now that I'm eating in the mornings, I eat less in the evenings, and I have a lot less craving, so I, I crave carbs, carbs a lot less. Mm -hmm. So I found it um, much more sustainable, whereas before I was coming into these cravings a lot, now I don't um, to the same extent. So that was beneficial. Then the other issue with intermittent fasting is that it has definitely shown itself through studies to be beneficial to men. To right? what's it? To men. Men get some improvements uh, health-wise and many health markers and mood and stuff like that from intermittent fasting, so long as it doesn't interfere with their training, right? Somebody like me who's training very high intensity almost every day, not so good. I mean, the people they were testing were not people like me. They were people who were generally more sedentary, more spending time at the desk, not so concerned with performance. So in non-athletes, intermittent fasting was very effective for men. No. Unfortunately, <laughs> the studies have not been done very extensively on women. There's only been a few women involved in the studies. And interestingly, the women's results were quite poor. But they reported the research just based on the average, and the men's results were good enough that it brought up the average to an average improvement. It hasn't been studied thoroughly on women, and the women who were involved did not thrive on intermittent fasting. So from what you're saying is better have some protein for breakfast. Protein and fat. Yes. And get it through, get yourself through whatever, yeah. another meal, yeah. versus have just coffee and seeds. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely some protein and fat. So, and, and you said before that your body got used to it, so you actually are hungry when you wake up. Uh, I'm not always hungry when I wake up, but I'm hungry by the time the, the school gets done. I'll take a shot just to like. And, and I keep it pretty light, right? I don't force it to pee myself. So, what do you have? Like, what's your breakfast? Whatever's there. I eat. What's salmon, salmon today? Kangaroo, uh, what did I have today? Uh, salmon. So, basically, leftovers from yesterday, right? Yeah, all, my meals aren't differentiated by time of day. They're. Oh, yeah. You know. What about peanut butter? Yeah. Okay, but we want some protein. And we did uh, the categorization of foods and the nuts were in the fat section, a high carb fat. We still need uh, a high quality protein. So, so potentially if you have like half of a cattle and an egg. Yep. That's good. Great. Or a sausage and an egg. Big or a sausage and avocado or olives. Great. That'd be good. Yeah. I think sausage. Don't need to be too complicated. Keep it simple. Um, so you know the other part is fueling performance, and that is one of the questions people have. I think they're not here today. People ask. I, I have that question. So sure. you want to make sure that you're getting enough protein and fat to support whatever activity level you have going on. The higher that activity level, the more you need to be disciplined about feeding and making sure that you get enough. And if you're looking for high performance, hunger is the enemy. And this is not good. This is your body starving. And so you can get away with it if you're more sedentary and not training so much. A little bit of hunger is not going to kill you. It might be good. But if you're training a lot, you really want to make sure you're not going hungry. And so meal size and, and timing were a couple issues. So size, I really believe you should be eating until you're hungry. And if you don't include sugars and lots of artificial flavor and things like that, it's incredibly hard to go eat. You know that feeling? Yeah, of, it's true. Yeah. You know that feeling of, oh my god, I'm so bloated, I ate way too much? Can't do that if you don't have added flavors to your food. If you're just eating meat and uh, fats and vegetables in their raw form, you stop eating them. So I say eat as much as you need to feel satisfied and eat as frequently as you need to, to feel satisfied if you're hungry. For performance or for weight loss? Both. Both. Absolutely for both. It's a big mistake that a lot of people make for weight loss is they try to under eat, which is a killer cycle. So I don't, 
under eating though. <laughs> I never want to be. But I eat like a lot of little snacks. So I basically graze. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's that's interesting. Every time you eat a meal is an inflammatory response. Your body has inflammation in response to the food that you take in. It typically takes two, three, maybe four hours for that inflammation group to go down. So what will happen to me if I continue to graze all the time and snack all the time? Guess what happens to that inflammation? Yeah, it's now chronically inflamed and I get chronic inflammation. Is that around joints and stuff? Or like where is the inflammation? It's systemic. It's systemic. So it's your whole body. Oh. So it's an immune response. Oh. It's happening. And so now I'm going to start weakening the immune system. I'm going to start getting stiff and sore and achy. I'm going to start feeling lethargic. Um, and you know, you might see a rise in cortisol levels, things like that, stress hormone, right, which is going to then put you into this cycle right, where, where things get bad. So that's why you want to make sure the meal that you have is enough that you don't want to snack into your next meal. Yeah. Okay, so what is the space in between the meals then? When you feel You hungry. just said that, well I feel hungry all the time, especially when I'm stressed. So that probably means you're not eating enough all the time. That means you're walking away from the table while you're not full. Mm -hmm. Some days I have something like what happened when I went home yesterday, I had lunch, I ate the regular size lunch and I was starving, so I ate another lunch, same size portion as before. Like in one sitting? Well, I had to get up and get some more and then bring it back and <laughs> sat down again, but okay, lunch number two. And so, you know, you, you don't want to be hungry for sure, and if you're having one of those odd days where you're hungry an hour after eating, like hungry, proper hungry, like you want another meal, I'd say do that. Listen to the wisdom of your body. But uh, generally, if you're getting hungry every hour, there's something going on. Probably you've got too many carbs. So this is what's probably happening for you. Please do this, this is where I was going to start. Yeah. So we've come back to my beginning, which is nice. So glycogen is the form that sugar takes when it's being carried in your blood. And your body, your body can take about two minutes worth of fuel in your blood. Right? And this is what you burn through while you're exercising. About two minutes into exercise, all that sugar that you're carrying in the blood is essentially used up. Right? So we've got two minutes worth of fuel in glycogen form. And so this is how much your blood is capable of carrying. Glycogen in the blood is toxic. If you have more than this, it will cause harm to you and eventual death. So the way that your body deals with this is if the glycogen levels go high, it's going to trigger insulin, which is a storage hormone that signals your body cells to open up and take the excess glycogen in. Now, excess glycogen is stored in two types of cells. In a muscle cell, you guys know how much sugar a muscle cell can take, approximately? 
About 10 to 30 seconds worth of energy. Okay, so when you do your one rep max deadlift, you're basically using up an energy store in there, right? So 10 to 30 seconds, a 100 meter sprint kind of thing. Then once that runs out, your body switches over to the sugar available in the blood. Your fat cells. Any idea how much sugar your fat cells can store? One day. Infinite. Yeah, because they can just make more fat cells, right? Exactly. And they can expand the big. They're huge. They can expand and they multiply. So essentially, if you had too much sugar for your bloodstream, it's now toxic. Insulin's going to be released and try to stuff it all into the muscle cells if it can. It's not going to fit very much. Those are going to fill up really fast. And if you haven't been exercising, they're probably already full, right? If you've been sprinting and doing some heavy lifting, they'll be empty and they'll fill up first. And that's why weightlifting and sprinting and things like that are great for getting lean because all that sugar has to go into there first. Once those are full, it has to go into the fat cells. That's only, it has to go into the fat cells. So when you spike that insulin every time, you're tr tr triggering a storage response. Now, the way our bodies were designed to eat, eating fruits and vegetables and things like that, nuts, seeds and meat, where you actually have your protein and your fat and your carbohydrate together, so digestion is slowed down and you're eating foods like berries or vegetables that are fairly low in sugar, what, so this would be the perfect world, that's never what actually happens. What your body is designed for though, is you have your little meal, let's say it's your eggs and sausage and some berries and uh, an avocado in the morning, and your blood sugar, while well, it was low because you were sleeping, now it goes up, but it goes up really gradually. And then insulin is released, but just a little bit, and it starts storing that, and this should be about two to three hours, this window here from the time that you ate, and then your blood sugar, too much of it has now been stored away. Right? And so you start getting hungry again. And so then at this point we get really hungry, you would eat again, and your blood sugars would come up again. Let's say you had a chicken breast and a salad and you had some olives there, nuts, something like that. And you would see this kind of a cycle and it would go through the day. And every two to three hours you'd be refeeding. That's what your body's designed to handle. And it works really well there. So it stays pretty close to optimum levels. You're never like hangry, right? You never have that kind of your mood drops and, and that sort of thing. You'll never have that if you're eating this way. Unfortunately, what we typically do is we when we have something, let's say orange juice and some toast and whatever with our eggs. And what we're going to see is, I think there's a black one here, so it's a nice colored markers. So, I'm going to see this jump, and it's dramatic, because the orange juice enters my bloodstream really quickly, as does the toast. And maybe if I didn't have any fat or protein with it, I didn't even have anything to slow down the digestion, so it's accelerated. And it's high, and so your body releases a huge amount of insulin, it overreacts. And it stores all that real fast. Where is it storing it? It has to go into the fat. It's way too much. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. It's got to go there. And what happens? Now, this is like one hour, perhaps. What happens here? You're crazy. I'm, I'm not hungry. I'm starving. Like, I have to have something. And what do I want? I need something to bring my blood sugar. Because I'm in emergency. My blood sugar is now too low. And so I'm going to go for a chocolate bar or a granola bar or something really sugary and sweet and then I'm going to do that and guess what's going to happen? I end up doing that. And that's usually the pattern we'll see in a grazing kind of diet, right? If I take a look at your food log, I bet that's what I'm going to see. I could be wrong, but that's what I would expect to see. And you're going to see frequent feedings and you're going to see these crashes and you're going to see mood associated with this, you're going to feel horrible down here. You're going to be an awful person during those times, right? And uh, you might be a horrible person at those times too. I'm actually really terrible at either end of those. And some of you can tell if I ate clean or not, you're being a jerk. What have you been eating? Because right? my personality changes along with this. 